Hey YouTube, it's Angry White Man, and this is my review of the Tacone Soar 114 scale brushless electric racing boogie. It is advertised as a racing boogie, which I'll get into that later because it kind of makes sense why they would do that. So it is a 114 scale, so it's going to be a little unique. Usually you don't see those around. And, but what is neat about it is it does have standard 12 millimeter hexes. So pretty much a lot of your like 10th scale wheels and stuff will actually fit on here and all. So there's a lot of different wheel and tire combos you can get out there. So first we're going to look a little outside view. So this is the car. I'm actually going to go ahead and bring it in. It's on a roll of duct tape because I'll get into what broke later. So um, yeah, it has, it has aluminum shocks. Oh, crap, I just moved the camera. It has aluminum shocks. They are threaded. They have aluminum caps. And well, the only thing that they have plastic is they have these little uh, eyelet cap like mounting points of the shock tower that those are plastic so and when you roll it over especially in the front since actually the body is lower than the, all the shock towers the wing and the shock tower take a lot of damage so actually they take all of it really so these do get scratched up pretty easily and if they're not scratching it will just those will just break off so but it hasn't happened yet mostly because other things broke that prevented it from happening i'll get into everything later just i'm kind of in a bad mood and I'll, you'll know why so the tires they're pretty soft, actually. They do have foam inserts. They come pre-glued. They're pretty soft. The tread pattern is... I mean, no, it's one of those like little racing patterns. Now, do they last long? I mean, if you run on asphalt, not really. I mean, I've been running it like half... Well, a little more than half on dirt and like grass and only a little bit on asphalt. But they're still kind of slicks in the back. I mean, they still have tread pattern, but it's kind of easy to get the car into a drift. Now, to keep the drift, not so much, because the front's to catch on, and then it doesn't want to, like, drift, really. The shell, I really like the shell. It's, it's like, a really nice physical design, and then, like, all these little ridges here and stuff. I like that. And then the color scheme is also really nice. I like the gray and this little, like, neon. This is not the stock wing, if you're wondering. This is, like, a little 116 scale wing. So, yeah, you can get parts for other cars, like 10 scale and 16 scale, but they will be a little different. This is a stock wing. It's a piece of shit. It two wheelies and it just ripped off like this. Now you can see the size difference. So if you do get something 16 scale, it's probably going to be a little smaller. What I do recommend if you're actually going to get this and want to put like a good wing on it, Low C Mini 8, that wing is amazing. It's like actual hard plastic, so it's not going to like break. And it's the only thing you have to do is drill a couple of custom holes. So yeah, that is it. It has, it has metal toe blocks. That's good because I've had an issue with the toe blocks before. So that's a little, it's good at their metal. You know, standard plastic A-arms, that has dog bone set up, no, nothing too extreme, but so far I haven't had any A-arm breakages. So, this is the outside. You know, two body clips, no big deal. The only thing I, I, thing I don't like is the cover, the body's like a little too snug around it, and there's kind of a good amount of heat buildup. I'll now open it up for you guys to see the inside of it. There it is. There's the inside of the boogie. Now, it does come, there is a brushed version and there's a brushless. This is the brushless. I can't really speak for the brushed version. I don't know what it's like, but I mean, you know, this thing is a little car. So I wouldn't expect you to make this into a modding truck or a car. So pretty much speed is going to be this thing's friend. That's why I do recommend the brushless version. The brushed one, I mean, I just think it's not really worth it for something this small. I'm kind of adjusting my camera, sorry. So yeah, it has a 4,500 kV motor. I'm not sure what brand it is, but I'm pretty sure since Tacone doesn't make motors and this is a Tacone car, I'm guessing it's a Tacone motor. Now, Tacone motors, I like them. I have them for like airplanes. I have this big ass airplane. I have it on there and I like it. So the motors should be good. And the motor and thing is good. It has a 35 amp ESC. It has these 3.5 bullet connectors, which I'll get into the battery in a minute. But it says on the physical ESC, if you will focus, that okay it's gonna focus and can take up the three cell lipo as you see i have a two cell in it and i don't really recommend going higher unless you really kind of want to gear down because after like 25 minutes on the two cell the motor gets pretty darn hot and you really want to stop running it so i mean it will get like really hot if you want it more than like 30 minutes it does come with a solar d655 servo it's one of these mini High speed servo, it's on high torque, but you don't really need high torque for this thing. You do need the faster speed, because if you're going fast with this car, you don't want to be sluggish turning. That's bad. So, yeah, basically, you know, it has one of these standard servo savers, which I fucking hate, and I'll get into that later also. 
I'm just not a big fan of boogies. I just got this from my uncle. I was really not expecting to get a boogie, much less something this small. But, you know, I mean, he got it for me. Whatever. It's fine. He's not really that much. He doesn't know much. He's more of a hunting guy, so he doesn't know that much about vehicles besides, like, ATVs and UTVs, really. And guns, obviously. So he just went ahead and got this for me. Either it was, like, a last-minute present. I don't know. I really don't care that much. I mean, I like the guy... It's just he doesn't really, when it comes to cars, or at least me, especially RC cars, he's not that, you know, he's not that intelligent when it comes to them. So, stock, it does come with this little 1,100 milliamp nickel metal hydride 7.2 volt. It's total shit. The max you'll get is like 10 minutes out of this thing, and it charges for like an hour and a half or something. It is absolutely terrible. I just totally recommend you, like, completely toss it. It also comes with one of these chargers, these wall chargers. That's why it takes like an hour and a half to charge like a thousand milliamps. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 nah, it's not bad, but I really don't recommend it. So, hold on, let me move some things out of the way. So what I have is I have this 10th scale, 5,000 milliamp hour LiPo. This thing, I can get like five or six hours of runtime. It's a two cell LiPo, so it's a pretty good power increase too. I love this thing. This thing and this car go pretty damn well together. I say pretty damn well because, let me turn it around, um, that's why. The battery is literally the size of the car. Also, really, the only issue is this, is in the A-arm gets a little hooked up on the battery, actually the other way. That's really the first issue. That's really not that big of a deal, except sometimes, also, what happened is the battery, as you see, the camera's bent. Because the battery sometimes slides back and hits the camera. The second issue is that the car comes with 3.5 millimeter bullet connectors. This is a 4 millimeter for the battery. This, I love. These are these little like adapters. They go from a 4 millimeter to a 3.5. Your center bullet adapter. Plug them in, you know, plug in the battery. Everything's fine. No big deal. So this, I absolutely love this battery. I also use this on a couple of other vehicles and all. So yeah, I love this battery. I'll do a review on the actual batteries I have. I'll do a review on like everything. But that'll be later on, obviously. So yeah, also, if you're wondering what remote I have, this is not the stock remote that comes in the car, the one in the back there. Um, there is a FlySky receiver in here, it's a four channel receiver, you know, it's pretty good. The only issue is the long ass antenna, like, are you shitting me, it's that long, it goes like, swerves all the way around. And this is the FS GT2, I just went ahead and got it because I really needed a controller, I'll get into what actually broke later because I'll do like a timeline of what actually like the events I went with this car but I needed a remote right then because I had to run the car and the stock one I could not so this was like 15 20 bucks I went ahead and got it whatever it takes eight double A's so that's really the only complaint I have besides the weight this thing is pretty fucking heavy I mean I have like some airplane you know six channel remotes that take eight double A's and they will weigh much less than this so that's just you know just the thing to think about fly sky I mean, I personally like FlySky because one of them is the FlySky, I think it's FST6. I love that thing. LED screen, I love it. I'll do a review on it, actually, because I love it so much. So, yeah, basically, the stock receiver is this thing right here. It's one of these little two-channel and a bind thing. It's a tacone. It's, you know, I mean, you get the job done, but I don't really expect the miracles out of it. Okay, so, yeah, that's basically everything. If you have any, like, additional questions or if I didn't mention anything that you'd like to know... You know, there's a comment section, and I'm really widely open to opening the con to responding to the comments. I'm a little sick, so my nose is a little stuffed up, and for some reason I can't talk either. So now I'll go through the timeline with the car. So what happened, first off, I got the car, stock battery, like two-foot jump. I jumped it, first thing that happened is these little dog bone housings, or these dog bone cups here in the wheels, broke. As in the dog bone, like, popped out and just shattered them. Nitro RCX, which I think besides Amazon is like the only place that actually sells this boogie, at least at the time of this filming. So they do offer an aluminum upgrade. Like they offer these little cups or drive or out, well, the output drives here, but they offer these little things, aluminum ones. I went ahead and got them. I put them into the front. I don't really need them in the back. There's still the stock ones in the back because the back wheels don't turn. I think the issue is whenever you turn and then you land, that's when shit happens. So, but and so far they have not popped out. That was like literally the first time I drove it. So I fixed it. Then two days later. Now, when I say two days, I mean like two days. I've had this since like a little after Christmas. And it's kind of towards the end of February. When I say two days, I mean like 
two days of drive time. So, you know, because be before these things shipped, it was like a week. And then two days of driving, and then one day, and then on the second day, my cousin, well, actually, my mom invited my aunt over, and she brought her little eight-year-old cousin. This guy was shitting himself to drive an RC, but I can't let him drive my airplane, or the helicopter, or the nitro monster truck, so I just let him drive this thing. I mean, you know, I'm like, whatever. I mean, I have to let him drive some something, because he was literally, like, about to shit his pants if I didn't let him drive an RC. So I let him drive it. Let's just say the idiot is totally mentally challenged, and he drove it into the sewer. Yes, into the sewer. On the side of the road where they have, like, these little, like, curbs, and then there's this little, like, opening in there for, like, you know, rain drainage. It drove it down there. I borrowed some big-ass magnets from my neighbor, and I was able to attach them to shock towers and then lift the car up. The whole front was gone. Diff housing, shock tower. Shocks were okay, except, again, for these plastic parts. Uh, steering knuckles, these little, the A-arms were fine, the hinge pins were broken, I'll get into this metal thing later. Everything broke, completely shattered, I had to pay for it all, again, shipping, like, a week and a little bit, I think. Then, I, uh, I ordered the stuff online, and it came in, so I fixed it, and then, two jumps late, no, two days later, as in on the second day, again, for some reason, two, is like, this car will to number two. I was jumping, and one of these little cups in the toe blocks, the plastic ones, snapped open, and it just fell out. So then the hinge pin was just loose in there, dangling, and it kept sliding forward and just sliding out. So I put in a little bit of silicone tubing from the Nitro Monster Truck, right there, just to keep it from, like, moving around, and then I put this little metal plate so it doesn't slide out. This was, like, literally, like, a five-minute fix, because they were out of stock on the part for the online, and my hobby store, well... Again, as you see, everything keeps fucking breaking. Now, this isn't even the main event, let's call it. So, my hobby store does have a couple of parts for this thing, but they're not stocking anymore, because, like, nobody has these things anymore, and they're kind of shit, too. So then, after that, this is when the, I'm putting... I don't know, like I said, he did drive it into the sewer, so that does probably have something to do with the receiver, but this is when the receiver started really acting up. It was kind of bad from the beginning, as in sometimes the remote... Well, the car would, like, spaz out into full throttle... But what really happened after this is when it really got bad. Basically, I think there was a shortage inside of the actual transmitter because every time the, the controller was upright, it would start going full throttle, it could not do anything. And when I turned the remote sideways, it would actually work for a little bit before it would start spazzing out again. As in just, you know, full throttle, zero, full, zero, whatever. I cannot deal with that and I can't drive. There's no way to fix it because I binded the remote to another car, it did the same thing. I binded another remote to this car and it didn't. So it was the remote. I fuck, I yelled it, I just threw away, well, I didn't throw, I sold the remote to my hobby shop for them to, like, fix it and all, I just didn't really feel like doing it myself, I know I could, I just, I don't know, and then I saw this thing for, like, 20 bucks, I was like, whatever, so I went ahead and got it, and it's, being, like I said, it's been working fine, now, this is for an electric car, so if you want to get this for a nitro, it does not have any throttle dual rate, or, well, it does have throttle trim, though, but you don't have dual rate, so not a nitro remote, so, yeah, that broke, then, this is the, kind of, the main event, Basically, this the way this is really for all independent suspension RCs. The way the power from like jumps or from compression in the shocks travels, it goes from the tires to the A arms to the shocks, and then the shocks bring it to the shock tower. What wants to happen every time you go up is basically it wants to lift the shock tower up and basically rip it off of the diff housing. This is a major weak spot in this car because that's exactly what fucking happened. And, and just wait until I say how many times. So I was literally driving it, jumping it off like, a, you know, the same two-foot jump that I did in the beginning. Um, yeah, I mentioned that thing bent from the battery, yeah. So I was jumping it, and then I landed it, and this whole shock tower just ripped off of the diff housing. Completely gone. Now, like I said, they were out of stock on online. My hobby store had three. I went ahead and got all three. I, and, well, no, 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 sorry, no, they had one, but... They didn't have it at the moment. They said they were shipping it, but they said they would be able to ship one. That's it. So I went ahead and I, I have this really nice, like, Loctite epox, epoxy glue. This shit is amazing. I use this on, like, an airplane, and I use this on a couple of other things. As long as you get it on there right, because you have to, like, mix the two tubes. If you don't, it will literally come off in, like, doesn't, uh, I can, like, poke it and it will come off. For some reason, though, it did not want to work on this boogie. As in, I've, I mean, I did the exact same procedure I did with my airplane or my other boogie that I literally glued the main chassis together because it was a plastic and it jumped for like two months before it actually snapped. I did the same procedure on here. The next day, it broke. I re-glued it. It broke again. I re-glued it. It broke again. Three fucking times it broke. 
Then the actual diff casing came into my hobby store. I went ahead and got it. Three days of running, it fucking happened again. This shock tower part, every time I did this, it would... Are you fucking kidding me? Oh my god. It just broke off again. Well, there's the fucking Tacon Sora. There it is. There's your fucking boogie. Pardon my language, but if you were me, you and this happened to you seven times, you'd probably be mad too. So yeah, after I got the second housing, long story short, I re-glued it, and then it broke four times. This is the fifth time right now. All I was fucking doing- oh no, the thing is, all four times, it was when I jumped it. Now, I just fucking touched it, and it broke. Okay, I'm done. The cone sore is basically shit. If I was to do like a scale rating, I'd give it like a fucking 2.5, or like a maybe a 3, because it is pretty powerful. But then it breaks, and then it turns into like a fucking hell. Because parts suck ass for this thing. It breaks so often, I mean every two days. And yeah, so there, there you have it, kids. There's a Tacone Sword. If you get this thing, literally order like two sets of like the whole front, basically, because sooner or later, everything here is going to break. That's what I would do. Ah, uh, there actually is a short construct version of this thing. If I am to keep it, which right now, the fifth time, plus the other three, so eight in total, if I am to keep it... I'm gonna remake this into the short- what the fuck is this bumper? That's what I wanna say, I just realized it. Look at this, this doesn't do shit. Okay, the bumper's fucking retarded. Basically, what happened is, um, yeah, it broke eight times, and I have not been able to run it, because, yeah, it broke, it fucking breaks. Every day, I go out, I run it ten minutes, actually like five minutes, and it fucking breaks off. I'm done with this car, I'm fucking done with this car. Oh my god, okay. I was gonna do this little- Upgrade, put on this hard body drift Toyota Supra. It's pretty fucked up because it's off a drift car. And then it has this epic opening fucking chrome V8 in here. And I was gonna put some lights in, I was gonna make this an amazing car, but no, I can't anymore. Because it fucking broke. Again. This time, I put some super glue with the epoxy stuff on. And it, from touching it, it's worse than when it was epoxy by itself. I should probably try super gluing it, but I've already done that on other RCs, and it will last you again like a couple of days, and then it will just completely break if it'll even out if it'll last you like a day. I'm literally done with this fucking boogie. Okay, so yeah, order like two whole sets. Actually, don't even get this car really. If you do, order like two sets of the whole front. But what you can do this 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 is literally the only option. After if this does not work, there's nothing else we can do to this car because there's no aftermarket aluminum upgrades for this thing. Basically, there's a short construct version, which you might be able to do. It has a big-ass front bumper, a rear bumper, and then you have to put a body over it. The only thing is, the short cross has an inch longer wheelbase, so that will take some modification to the body. But if you do that, the only thing is those bumpers might save you. Because really, all the impact comes from this, and constant fucking slamming on the ground. Okay, so, hey, it actually stuck, it fucking stuck to itself now. Nope, never mind. Okay, I have to re-glue this, because I think I'm actually going to give this to my cousin. And I'm tomorrow Sunday, so I'm probably gonna give it to him during church, because I see him during church. So I have to glue this thing right now. Okay. So there you have it, guys. Uh yeah, please subscribe to see what I'm up what I do with this shit and all the other RCs I have and stuff, or whatever I'll be doing with those, because I did some nice mods to my monster truck. So yeah, like, comment, subscribe. Yeah, if you have any questions or if you just really wanna fucking say how much this car is shit, go ahead and free feel. Feel free to do that in the comment section. Since I did say I have other RCs, like three times, there's a little sneak peek, there's the airplane. So there you have it, kids. Or whoever's watching. Yeah, I have to go fix this fucking thing again. Okay, yeah, so, bye YouTube.